Hello and welcome to another week of worshipping at home. It's been another glorious week in terms of the weather, which at least is some compensation for this difficult time that we're all living through. Today we are on the third Sunday of Easter and we're going to be thinking about the journey of the disciples with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now we pray the collect. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's surprising in this time of lockdown how Roger and I have found a regular routine. We now have a routine for each day, which is get up, have breakfast, say morning prayer, mid-morning coffee, lunch, afternoon tea, eat in the evening and working in between, as well as spending some time relaxing. We've also got a weekly routine and each Tuesday on our day off, we walk from the Vicarage to Stamford Park, we walk up through the park and then back home again. And what's been great is that we've not got bored of this same walk each week because there's something different each week that we're noticing. Without the traffic, it seems as though there's so much more to hear and the birdsong is quite prolific. 
we're enjoying seeing the squirrels scampering around in the undergrowth. There's a family who seem to come at the same time as us and they come and feed the squirrels as we're walking by. The flowers also have changed each week and we've been enjoying walking through the tulip garden on the recent weeks and seeing how each week, week by week, more flowers are opening and there's now such a mass of colours and different shapes. It's quite amazing. This week Roger and I should be on holiday in County Donegal and we were looking forward there to exploring the area and walks along the coast and exploring that area. But we can't go. Some of you may not have been able to go outside for weeks and are just itching to get outside and take a walk. Some of you may not have been able to walk anywhere for some time because you're housebound. So although for some a physical walk is an impossibility. It is possible though to take walks in our imagination. When I can't get to sleep, there's a walk that I always take in my mind. I walk along the shores of Loch Etive in Scotland, retracing my footsteps on a holiday of a holiday many years ago. I find this so relaxing as I try and remember the sights and the smells and what it felt like. And I rarely get to the end of the walk before I've got so relaxed that I've fallen asleep. And I think that's quite a good thing for any of us to do at the moment, that if we can't actually get out and enjoy a walk in the fresh air, perhaps trying reliving walks of the past, remembering them, remembering the details. It's so good for our mental health, which is something we all need to take care of at this time. A gospel reading is about remembering a walk. It's a walk that we remember each year at Easter of disciples on the road to Emmaus after the events of Good Friday and Easter Day in Jerusalem. They're walking along, chewing over all that had happened back in Jerusalem when they're joined by a stranger who wants to know what they're talking about. They're utterly amazed that someone could have been in Jerusalem and not know what's happened. But they retell the story of the crucifixion and the resurrection. At their destination, they invite their companion in to join them for the night. And as they sit down to eat, they saw him take the bread, bless it, break it and give it to them. And in that action, they recognised Jesus and realised why their hearts had been burning within them while they'd been walking with Jesus along the road. Now, there's an ancient tradition of using the imagination to enter into the scriptures. And I think that's something that can be helpful for us in these days. Just as I talked earlier about us remembering particular walks we may have done in the past, we can enter into this walk on the road to Emmaus. The disciples were uncertain about their future as they started their walk, and they no doubt felt a number of emotions of grief, depression, fear, anger and stress. And maybe you can relate to some of that today. So imagine that you are one of those disciples setting out from Jerusalem with a heavy heart. You're barefoot, the road's dusty, it's hot. What does the road feel like to you? How comfortable are you? What's the heat and the dust making you feel like? You're weary and carrying a lot of different emotions and thoughts. What's on your mind at this time? What are you feeling? What are you talking about with your friend? And now a stranger joins you, who you later realise is Jesus, the risen Lord. What do you think that Jesus wants to say to you at this time? Imagine yourselves walking alongside Jesus. What's he want to say to you? And what do you want to say to him? Go on, you can say anything. Whatever's on your heart and your mind, you can tell it to Jesus. You just take a moment and listen. Think about this walk, what it's like, what you're noticing. Now you might like to revisit this later. You might like to find the reading which you can find on the church's website. If you just Google St Martin's 
Droylston or St Andrew's Droylston, you'll find the Gospel readings. If you've got the sheet already, then you can read the Gospel reading again and try entering into it even more deeply. Now, you might not find this helpful at all. We don't all engage with the Bible, with different ways of praying and understanding what's going on in the same way. So if it doesn't work for you, that doesn't matter. But we can have confidence that Jesus is walking alongside us this day or sitting alongside us if we are sitting at home. He's alongside us every moment of our lives. He's there for us to turn to, for us to reveal our deepest thoughts to. He won't be shocked. Just know that Jesus is there, listening and alongside you. Now we might have to wait a while before we can be in the presence of Jesus around the communion table where we receive bread, where we receive his body again. But the blessings of Jesus are still ours, now and always. And so may that give you hope this week, that wherever you go this week, wherever you find yourself resting or stuck this week, know that Jesus is alongside you and that his blessings are for you. Amen. So let us pray. 
So today we pray for those who are frustrated at having to stay at home or limit their activities. May they know God's peace at this time. We pray for key workers working in difficult circumstances. May they have the strength that they need to do all that is required of them at this time. We pray for those who are unwell, especially those who are ill with coronavirus. And we pray for those who have died. Remembering, especially at this time, Jill Cummins, Jim Stewart, Jean Barker, Eric Booth, Steve Ford, Neil and Carol Kenny. May they rest in peace and rise in glory and may their family and friends be comforted at this sad time. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so as we come to the end of this time together, a prayer of blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So this week, know that you are not alone, that Jesus is walking alongside you, blessing you, longing to hear your inner thoughts, your fears, but also to hear those words of praise, of where you can see God's blessings working in your life at this time. So God be with you this week. Amen.